how to speak confidently with your boss every day i mean i meet many corporate employees they are my students and they tell me one problem which they face and the problem is when they start talking to their boss they they have many problems i mean they go blank they are nervous so in this video i'm going to tell you how to overcome this problem this problem is with most of the corporate employees and today i'm going to talk about two important factors in this the psychological factor i'm going to tell you how to handle the emotions and how to deal with your emotional instability and second is the behavioral means behavior is also equally important here how to change your mindset and how to change your behavior these two things i'm going to tell if you have the problem of talking to your boss you get nervous then this video is a must for you don't miss this video here we go let's start well friends as i said this is a big problem with us and many of us don't know how to handle this we think that it's a english problem many of us think that it's a english problem let's come here we think that we have an english problem but english is not a problem there are some other problems but before going ahead let us see what are the symptoms if you are having these symptoms then definitely you also have the same problem we can call it as uh, anxiety or panic okay so check the symptoms are they there in you first one make mistakes you make mistakes while speaking with your boss you make mistakes i mean you make some grammatical mistakes while speaking with your boss does this happen with you usually this happens when you speak to your boss but with normal friends with your colleagues with with someone you know that doesn't happen if this is happening to you then yes you have to work on this second thing do you forget what you planned you know what happens you forget what you planned to speak many a times you go in his cabin to speak something you have certain plans in your mind and when you go there you forget what what you wanted to say and you come out and then you remember oh i had to say this and you haven't done that is it happening with you this is second symptom third one is there you say something else which you did not plan so this also happens due to nervousness you plan something else and you say something else your plan was to say two three points but you say something else which you hadn't planned and they just pop up from nowhere and you speak and you come out and then when you come out you realize no i spoke something else my my plan was to say something else this happens so this is another symptom and another is there when you are talking in a meeting you know in a meeting when you want to say something but your boss is present then you aren't able to communicate properly you get nervous you get stuck so these are all of the symptoms which usually people have and the last one is this one that is avoiding do you avoid your boss do you avoid going to his cabin do you get uh, very nervous do you get a uh, bowel syndrome do you feel anxious do you feel like vomiting before going to his cabin these are the different uh, symptoms so i am facing all these problems so if you are having all these five symptoms then you need to work on this now before going ahead for the solutions let us see what are the reasons first and then we will see the solutions if you think that as i said before that this is due to my english many of you have not done study properly it is not due to your english it is due to psychological factors and which are those psychological factors i'm going to tell you here let me move here now the first point is childhood i have seen that many uh, corporate employees who have this problem there is something to do with their childhood in the childhood days they are been uh, sometimes abused in school or insulted humiliated in front of the class it may have happened that they have been um, ill treated by their parents also they don't do it purposely but if you have a strict parent if you have a strict dad or strict mom these people scold and shout and these people become very shy they become uh, what i can say like uh, approval seekers they want approval of their teachers they want approval of their parents because they have been dominated by their parents and by their teachers sometimes it happens that when they go um you know 
in front of the stage, the teacher humiliates them because of their communication skills in front of the class. In home also, if you have any demanding parent, any very strict parent, this may impact your psychology. So just check whether it has happened with you or not. And you can write in the comments also. Now let us move ahead now and understand the next point. And the next point is as very crucial. We are going to go and see now what happens is in adulthood. You come with all these problems from your childhood. And when you are now 30, 35 and 40, still those scars, still those thoughts are there and they have impacted you. They are still lying there at the back of your mind, deep inside. And that fear and that tendency to please, to get approval of uh, important people in life is still there. And that will Im impact when you are going to communicate with your boss or your seniors. So what happens is the first point, as I said, approval at any cost. When, while speaking, you get nervous because we want approval of that person at any cost. We want that that person should approve you, that person should accept you, that person should like you. Now, you may say that, but sir, what's wrong in this? It's, it's good, like your boss approves you. Yeah, it's good. But the problem is with this word. He must approve me. That is the problem. He, this is a rigid expectation. He must. And usually you can't control his behavior you can control your behavior so when you are applying a must to someone else's behavior because you can't control his behavior you will get nervous you want approval from him because you want to speak in such a way that he should approve you he should like you you should get impressed and there is a must let me give you the solution now a very simple solution is there at the back of our mind we believe that he must instead of must change it and say i prefer I prefer. I prefer that he approves me. Approval is not like life and death for you. It's not oxygen for you. Approval is good, but it's not life and death. That thing you have to understand and that thing you have to tell yourself. When you prefer, when you prefer, see the change in your thought process. I prefer that he approves me, but it's not must. It's not mandatory because I can't control him. Hope you are getting it. You're enjoying this session. All right, friends. So let us move ahead. Now the next one is thinking that he may get upset and fire me. Now this happens. This is called as catastrophization. Huh? You, we catastrophize it. We think that ha, huh, he may get upset because of my English and he he will fire me. And this is what and this is our brain. I mean, this is our mind that thinks in this way. And we believe in these thoughts. We believe that they will be true. But Actually, these are all your imaginations. This is not going to happen. 99% it will not happen. Huh. If you are working in any BPO call center where only English is important, then it's true. But the most of us are not having that problems. What are the chances? Ask yourself. What are the chances that he will get upset and fire me? I don't feel so. I mean, there is no boss, no leader who is going to fire you because of uh, only this. Because he gets uh, upset and he, no, it's not going to happen. So tell yourself, be realistic, be rational. Allow your brain to think practically, rationally, in a realistic way. Our brain, that is our mind actually is foxing us. So be careful. Don't allow your mind to fox you. He will judge me by my English mistakes. Now, why we make mistakes? Because we believe that, okay, he is from IIM and he is from IIT and he is so fluent and his experience and his English is so good. My English is not good, therefore he will judge me. Well, actually, remember one thing that English communication is one part of your work. It is not your entire work. Your boss will be happy with you, with your other things, your behavior is important. Your punctuality is important, your time management is important, your honesty is important, your technical work is important, and then English is also important. English is one part of that. So, like he will judge you and with your mistakes, no, even if you're making mistakes, that's fine. He will not judge you. He will, okay, he will tell, improve your communication skills, work on this. But he is not going to do all these things. Your work is important than English. English is important, but only English is not important. Your work also plays a vital role. If you are very good in your work, if you are very focused, if you are disciplined at your work, if you are doing your work properly, then your boss 
says, okay, this guy is not very good in English, but his work is very important. He will tell the seniors, the management that, no, this guy is very sincere in his work. Is it true? You tell me one thing. And it is true. I know that. Now we are here for the action plan. As I said, this video is all about psychology and behavior. Your behavior is equally important. Now, with all these things, let us actually apply these principles in our real life. Okay, first thing, don't avoid your boss. This is the first thing. What we do is we avoid him. And this avoidance creates more trouble. What happens is, when you avoid, your brain thinks that this is a danger. And don't go there. Next time when you try to approach your boss or you have to go in his cabin, you are going to panic and get nervous while speaking to him. So don't avoid, give, your, give a signal to your brain that no, this is not a danger, this is a normal situation. That will only happen when you go and face him. Next point is ask for help to communicate in a better way. Ask to communicate in English. See what happens, you talk to your boss openly. Communication is very important openly. Ask your boss politely, tell that sir, you know, I get nervous when I speak to you and I forget my English and sir, uh, should we speak in English instead of Hindi or any other language? I don't feel so. If you request, he will reject. He will never say this. He will say that definitely I will help you. That's the reason why he is a leader. And if you don't have such a leader, then of course change your boss then. Okay, now this is very important. Go and talk to him and he will support you. And the last one is very important. Don't expect a miracle or magic to happen. See, now once you are doing this, once you are following the action plan, once you are talking to him, slowly your confidence will be back slowly your nervousness will go down but do not expect oh magic is going to happen and Sandeep sir told me and since three days I'm doing it it's not working it's not going to work getting it well friends hope this video has helped you and I'm sure that you all are going to work on this action plan I have seen many people struggling with their communication with their boss and they don't know what to do my video will definitely help you my video is a it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a example. I mean, it's a result of my study. I have studied a lot and I have worked on these things. Practically, I have told many of my students these tips. So you also should follow these tips and go and talk to your boss confidently. My best wishes to you. And write in the comments, after doing this experiment, write in the comments whether it is working or not. And I'm sure it's going to work. Take care, friends. Goodbye and thank you.